when his first album, Freak Out, was released. Now he's freaking us out with his autobiography, uh, the real Frank Zappa book. Please welcome Frank Zappa. <laughs> Real good band. Nice posse to ride with. Yeah, I know. Um, why don't you have a driver's license? Well, once upon a time I had one, but uh, I refused to stand in line at the Department of Motor Vehicles in Southern California ever again when it expired in 1967. <laughs> well, <laughs> you've been there too? I mean, I resent having to spend four hours of my life being shuttled from line to line, questioned by people who shouldn't be in that job in the first place. And, uh, I never go anywhere, so I figured I'd just stay home and make my wife get a license. I was shocked when they told me, they said, well, you know, Frank doesn't drive. We were talking about getting you here. And uh, is it that bad? Uh, well, it was to me, uh, that, that impressionable age. You know, you go in there and four hours out of your life when you're that age. <laughs> <laughs> You have a thing about romantic lyrics, love lyrics. What is your beef with love lyrics? Well, they're not for me. You know, I just think that love lyrics have done a lot of damage in America. You, you hear these songs about love and you get this idea that it's going to be wonderful and then you go out there and do it and it's a mess, you know, and it's created all these expectations <laughs> in the audience. And I think that love lyrics have helped to create an atmosphere of bad mental health in America. I just refuse to participate in it. <laughs> Okay, you take a song like Weekend in New England or with Barry Manilow, you listen to a Luther Vandross song where he says, let me hold you tight if only for one night. Let me keep you near to ease away my fears. It would be all right if only for one night. Now what's wrong with a lyric like that? <laughs> well, let's let the audience decide. Do you think that that's a good lyric or not? I mean, this guy is saying, if I can't have you forever, just, if only for one night. <laughs> Why doesn't he say what he really wants to do to that girl? So you mean he really doesn't want to hold her tight? He, really, he wants to hold her real, real tight, you know? The thing is, that the love lyric beats around the bush. Why didn't he just say, I want to stick it in there? <laughs> I mean, it's just as easy to sing that as I want to hold you tight. Yeah. You want her to hold you tight. <laughs> Luther, come on, get with the program. <laughs> I guess you can't have a real love affair in one night, huh? Nah. <laughs> Not unless you're in a real big hurry. <laughs> What's in this book, the real Frank Zappa book? Well, first of all, the good news. The type is really large and it has cartoons in it. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Look how big that type is. <laughs> this is exactly what we need for a post-literate society. Please read this book. It, the type is so big. Okay. All done? See, it was fast, too. <laughs> Look, we'll take a commercial, and we'll come right back, and we'll talk more about what's inside there and what's inside there. Okay. I'll let just... me ask you a question. Okay. How come you never let them play a whole song on television? Um... Because <laughs> that's a good band, and you should let them play on television, not just in, during the commercials. You have a good point. You really have a good point, because they're... They're, they're bad. Just, just one song. <laughs> just one song. All they're day. probably better than some musical guests that we have. Yeah. I tell you what. What? Tomorrow night? Yeah. All right. We go riding with the posse tomorrow night. Okay.
Cool. Thank you. Yeah, I just, I just want to see live music stay on television. You should be a producer. You just produced a segment for tomorrow oh. night. Yeah. You never want to see that happen. <laughs> hey, that's how my career started, actually. I know, I know. Accidents uh. will happen. <laughs> That's a long story. I don't know if they know that, but we won't tell it again. They know that story. Um, let's talk about things on television. Uh, CNN. What do you think of CNN? I started watching CNN when you used to didn't have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. You know, now they're scrambling it and you have to pay to see all this right-wing hogwash they hand you. Mm -hmm. But CNN started off as a very good idea. You could see news all the time. And then it got bigger and bigger and bigger and it started going more and more and more to the right. And I think that right now, in order to watch CNN and extract news, you have to read between the lines so much mm -hmm. and s filter out all the speculation that they include in the news stories. I mean, showing the pictures and telling people what happened, cut and dried, that's the news. Yeah. But when you force a person who is a participate in, uh, participant in the news story to speculate on what it really means, I think that's pushing it. And they stay on that stuff too much. Now, I've actually seen you on CNN. Yeah, sure. I've been on there. In fact, they interviewed me the other day. I put a thing in my book about CNN and how I think they've gone down the tubes. And they interviewed me about that, and I told the same thing to them. Yeah. But let me give you an example of a CNN technique. Okay? Mm -hmm. Once upon a time, there was a news story that was announced by the, the anchor mm -hmm. like this. Uh, Dan Quayle will now be involved more in government policy-making decisions. So what do we see for videotape? Here's George Bush. He's wearing a white shirt, he's got his sleeves rolled up, he's holding a box of popcorn. Mm -hmm. And he's in a movie theater. And behind him, in the darkness, is Dan Quayle, walking around like a little clone in the background. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and right behind George Bush is Dan Aykroyd and Kim Bassinger. And obviously they are at the premiere of a movie called uh, My Stepmother is an Alien. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a Weintraub Entertainment Group film. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Weintraub and Mr. Bush are friends. I did some research. I found out how this story came about. George called Weintraub and said, Do you have a movie? He needed a little promotional thing to stick on the air. Mm -hmm. This is obviously a plug for a movie. And it's introduced as a story about Dan Quayle. Now that's mm. an abuse of the news, I think. Yeah. You were in the news a while back. Uh, I think I even saw you on CNN talking about this when Tipper Gore was trying to uh, have albums censored, put an R, put an X, or whatever system they were going to uh, create. I was surprised to see you heading the protest. Why wasn't someone like Prince involved with you in that? I mean, um, as a matter of fact, I, I don't know. You, you... Well, it sh he should have been involved in it, but I think that it's his right to keep his mouth shut. It's also Bruce Springsteen's right to keep his mouth shut and anybody else that they went after. They never attacked my lyrics. They, they attacked those people. They even mm. went after Michael Jackson. But you fought real hard for these people and it was never your music involved. That's the thing that shocked me. It's the principle of the thing. We live in a country where we're supposed to be free. Take a look at what happened in China. You got a bunch of kids there who want democracy. They don't even know what it is. We supposedly have it here. What do we do? Sit around and go, mm, <laughs> let somebody else take care of it for me. You know. What do you think uh, of the homeless situation? What would you do to deal with this? Well, I have a, a suggestion. It's probably not going to be very popular, but I think that, <laughs> uh, you know, it's, you can just take it with a grain of salt, I suppose. Uh, you have a bunch of people now who are homeless. These are whole families of people who are homeless. We never had this before. We used to have hobos, we had bums, we had winos, but we didn't have whole families with no place to live and nothing to eat. And we got one guy to thank for it, and his name is Ronald Reagan. Now, these people who are in the street right now with you know, no life support system, they're there because of something called voodoo economics. Ronald Reagan leaves office with a big fanfare and all of his friends get together and buy him a $2 million house in Beverly Hills. So this means he's not spending too much time at the ranch in Santa Barbara anymore. Mm -hmm. I think he ought to, at least, since it's his fault, let them move to Santa Barbara and squat on the ranch. <laughs> the book is called The Real Frank Zappa Book. This is Frank Zappa. Give it up, y'all.